starts right now. Just into our newsroom, a Kamal ISD bus driver has been fired. This coming after parents expressed their concern that the bus driver was allegedly assigning seats to students based on their race. Parents and their children say students of color were placed at the front of the bus while white students were placed at the back. The district says the driver told them students were separated because of behavioral issues. This happened back on February 24th. In a statement, a Comal ISD spokesman said this investigation, the, they investigated the allegations and then decided to fire the bus driver because of, quote, a demonstrated lack of due diligence and professional judgment when instituting discipline. The district says the bus driver did not do her due diligence in investigating the student's behavior. People in a south side neighborhood are all dealing with the same headaches these days. It was brought on by a group of car burglars. They got into about a dozen cars and trucks in a subdivision, subdivision near Salton Road and Interstate 37. Our Katrina Weber tells us why police say the victims may have given the crooks an open invitation to steal. The trail of a group of overnight thieves was mapped out this morning by patrol cars in the Southside neighborhood. Everywhere police stopped, crooks had been earlier. They looked around, I mean, they shuffled everything out and they left, I guess, because there's nothing in here to take. Even though she fared better than some of her neighbors on Stetson View, Mary Stein Cruz says she still felt violated. Others lost clothing, wallets, stereo equipment, and keys from their cars. They hit the whole neighborhood, basically. According to police, there were 10 victims and counting on three different streets. Thieves got into about the same number of cars here just last week. This time, it hit Edineo Espinosa especially hard. $47,000. They took his entire truck. My wallet was there too, so I got to call my credits and I don't have no, no driver license anymore. He says he got home around 11 last night and never heard a thing or saw any broken glass. Another neighbor reported seeing a group of suspicious men in a car. Others believe they caught them in action on surveillance cameras. Police say in just about every one of these cases, the car owners left their doors unlocked. They say the easiest way to keep out criminals is to lock them. For now on, definitely double check and triple check. I Mary Stein Cruz to, plans to, to be extra inside. careful That's about it. that. She also hopes her neighbors as well as police will be more watchful. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A mother facing charges after her son was seen running through the streets wearing handcuffs. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Amanda Rose Guevara was charged with assault causing bodily injury to a family member. An arrest affidavit accuses her of making her son put on handcuffs. Then Guevara is accused of grabbing an extension cord and whipping him with it multiple times. The boy was able to grab that cord, but then Guevara grabbed a second cord and continued hitting him. Eventually, he was able to run away. Guevara told deputies that she wanted to discipline him because he had been, quote, getting into trouble at school. The jury still has not been able to reach a verdict in the punishment phase of the trial of Rosalinda Olalde. She was convicted of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault charges on Wednesday. The jury resumed deliberations this morning following four hours of deliberations yesterday. Her lawyer has asked the jury for probation. Prosecutors are asking them to consider the high end of the punishment range. That range is from two to 20 years in prison. The summer of 2018, driving drunk, Olalde crashed broadside into a car, killing the driver and critically injuring four passengers. And police are still working to solve a murder case that happened 20 years ago, and they're naming their number one suspect. Police say 41-year-old Francisco Rangel is now under arrest and charged with a murder that happened back in 1996. Records show that Rangel is accused of stabbing 18-year-old Joseph Johnson to death on West Mistletoe Avenue. Police say they recently took a look at the unsolved case and realized they had missed talking to some people back then. They had to travel to Florida to talk to one of the witnesses, and police say that that man and one other named Rangel as the murder suspect. And President Donald Trump has signed an $8.3 billion measure to help tackle the coronavirus outbreak. So far, 12 people in the U.S. have died and more than 200 are infected. The legislation the president signed provides federal public health agencies with money for vaccines, tests and potential treatments. And it helps state and local governments prepare to respond to the threat. Just yesterday, Governor Greg Abbott said Texas now has the ability to test for the coronavirus. 
Abbott said tests can be conducted at 10 public health labs throughout the state that are part of the Center for Disease Control's Laboratory Response Network. One of the labs is in San Antonio, but it's not in operation just yet. The San Antonio Food Bank has launched a month-long coronavirus preparedness and prevention campaign. It's our latest case at community event. The food bank wants to put together 300,000 coronavirus preparedness kits. The kits will include food and supplies. We've got all the ways you can help on KSAT.com. Get all the information in our KSAT community section. And today marks the anniversary of the final day of the Battle of the Alamo in 1836. To honor those that died in the battle, the San Antonio Living History Association puts on the Dawn at the Alamo ceremony. Our Erica Hernandez tells us why some history buffs think, think it's important to remember the Alamo. Shots fired in honor of the estimated 189 men who died in the Battle of the Alamo that ended March 6, 1836. The San Antonio Living History Association continues to remember those fallen men with its Dawn at the Alamo event with a ceremony. Well, history is history. You can't change it. It good and the bad of it. Some people try to take away the bad of it and just leave the good, but it's all history. It all you know, it's all part of our heritage. The ceremony included songs by a local high school choir, reenactments, and moments of silence. Texas history buff Jason Lippert drove from Fort Worth for the ceremony, calling it a one-of-a-kind experience. Chills down your back of your neck. It's just, it's awesome. Can't repeat it. Living history interpreter Ron Moulton says you can't forget those men who died and fought in the Alamo because he believes they gave us so much. Those men you know, uh, fought for all their worth, gave it their all, so that we could be standing here talking to each other today. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Mexican sculptor Sebastian will be the Grand Marshal for the Fiesta Flambeau Parade this year. Sebastian is the sculptor behind the Torch of Friendship that's downtown. He says he's honored to be a part of the Fiesta Flambeau. The association made the announcement at a press conference this morning at the Buena Vista Theater on UTSA's downtown campus. This man is an incredible artist. He's internationally renowned. He's had exhibits all over the world, Italy, Spain, all over. And he is our friend here in San Antonio. As a matter of fact, we have more than 100 works by this gentleman. Singer Ali Brook is the honorary Grand Marshal for the 2020 parade. The parade is hailed as the largest illuminated night parade in the nation and is viewed by approximately 700,000 people on the streets of downtown San Antonio and another 1.5 million on television. Shooting for sport and a good cause, teams of shooters are gathered at the National Shooting Complex on the far west side for the Texas DPS Foundation third annual charity clay shoot. Our Adam Kasky and Garrett Berger are out taking part two. Garrett, organizers are saying this is their biggest event ever. Yeah, absolutely. Right now we've heard that there are 138 shooters. Adam and I will be the 139th and 140th of them on this course. The teams are made up from the corporate sponsors. Everybody's gathered around right now. We're getting ready to kick this off. Now this is the third annual charity clay suit for the DPS Foundation. That's similar to the 100 Club that the police have. They support DPS troopers and other employees with scholarships, financial assistance and emergencies and helping the families of fallen troopers. The foundation says it's about protecting the people who protect Texans. So I couldn't be happier uh, to be out here today, you know, supporting uh, the all the men and women of, of DPS, the commission, as well as the administrative folks that makes DPS such a uh, wonderful organization that it is. One of the very few law enforcement organizations that really, um, I think, has enhanced their culture over time. Now, the foundation says that many troopers don't actually know that they exist. They don't know that the benefits are available to them for no cost. So another thing that this event is about is raising awareness. You're going to catch up with Adam and I a little later on as we start the course. We're going to shoot 100 out of 100 today. That's right. Aces. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Maybe 10 of them. <laughs> Very cool. Live at the National Shooting Complex, I'm Garrett Berger.
here at KSAT 12 News. I just hope that he doesn't mistake, Adam doesn't mistake the gun for his Coscarone cannon thing and stuff. Oh, man. Crazy shit, nothing. <laughs> so. All right, thank you guys. The Lady Rockets from Judson ready to blast off of the state semi 6A final. Flair Ramirez with a final preview before tip off coming up. The race for the White House is now reshaping since Senator Elizabeth Warren dropped out. She failed to place higher than third in any state contest. Senators Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden are now fighting for her support. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. So we're signing the $8.3 billion. President Trump this morning signing the emergency funding bill to tackle the COVID-19 virus. After the California National Guard airdropped testing kits to a cruise ship off the coast of San Francisco. Officials expecting those test results today. A 71-year-old man who had been on that same ship last month became the first person in California to die from COVID-19 after being exposed during the cruise. Around three dozen people on board reportedly showing symptoms. The ship not being allowed to dock until those test results come back. Passenger Debbie Loftus quarantined in her cabin, her elderly parents in the next room, not very concerned about becoming infected. We all figured we'd been together and mingling for the last 13 days, so if we were exposed to it, it would have happened already. In Washington State, Seattle area district schools closed for 22,000 students for two weeks. In nearby Kirkland, federal investigators asking questions at the nursing home where most of the fatalities from the coronavirus have occurred. Families frustrated by a lack of answers. Colleen Mallory spoke with our Katie Hartung about her mother, who shares a room with one of the patients who died. Have you asked them to test her? Yes. Uh-huh. And what do they say? She's not showing symptoms. She doesn't have a fever. She's not coughing. And there's growing outrage in New Hampshire after an employee at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center returned from Italy, was symptomatic, and was told to self-quarantine. He allegedly went partying instead, and now he and another person linked to him have tested positive for COVID-19. Megan Terizian, ABC News, New York. If you missed it back on our 9 o'clock show, one of our producers got in that new ride out there at SeaWorld. It's a water tube ride hey. thing, and he got, like, really cold. <laughs> but it yeah. should be pretty good over spring break. Not going to be that cold, right? Things are going to start picking up. Right. You, you go in the afternoon when it's a little warmer. It was in the 50s this morning, so that, that's pushing it. But, no, it, it should be good spring break weather uh, next week. And this weekend we're looking for pretty good weather, too. If you want to go to the beach, a lot of people headed that way. Port A, Corpus Christi, looks great. Low 70s, both uh, Saturday and Sunday, water temperatures are in the mid-60s, okay? you got to be a little brave there, but uh, not too bad. Uh, moderate rip currents, that's something to be aware of, and just a very slight chance of some rain. Take a look at the time lapse. Boy, the sunrise was great this morning. Paused it right there. Look at that. Uh, you saw the beautiful colors in the sky. We had some thin high sears clouds working through. Made for a great sunrise. Now we've got mostly sunny skies, 67 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 28, so that's really low. East northeast Julie winds at about 13 miles per hour. And uh, temperatures right there in the mid to upper 60s for most of us. 61, though, Bernie Stage, one of the cooler spots. 62, Canyon Lake. 66, New Braunfels. 65, Randolph. 68 right now in Divine. And as you go south, you'll find 70s on the map. 72, Cristo Springs. 74, Katua. Just a really, really nice day. We've had a few thin high clouds. We saw those this morning. We'll see a few more this afternoon. No big deal. These will start to thicken up, though, as we get into tomorrow. And I think you'll notice a little bit more cloud cover on your Saturday. As we zoom out some, most of the state of Texas is doing really well. Uh, we've got high pressure in the upper levels in control for now, and that's going to keep things really nice. Uh, if you're traveling, a lot of people heading the road soon. Uh, we've got pretty good weather for that, too. Uh, this afternoon, we should be near 72 here in San Antonio, most places in North Texas in the 60s, but mostly sunny skies. As we get into tomorrow, there's a little disturbance that rolls out of Mexico. That could kick off a sprinkle or two. At the surface, we're really dry, so a lot of this isn't going to reach the ground, but there may be just enough there to see a couple sprinkles tomorrow morning, and then that'll spread east. So more cloud cover across the state tomorrow, but good travel weather still, 60s and 70s. And as we get into Sunday, same story, really. Uh, here's the big picture across the country, and what you'll notice is there's just not a whole lot going on. Things are really quiet here. Uh, the one storm system we do have is up across the northeast, and that's producing some pretty good rain and some lake effect snow as well. That'll move off the east coast 
uh, later today and into tomorrow. We are quiet meanwhile and down the line. This is what we're going to watch. So we're getting more of a southwesterly flow, which is more of a springtime flow that uh, we see around here, and that's going to allow for some disturbances to ripple through. These aren't much, and so it may kick off a shower, maybe a storm. We have some site chances next week, but it shouldn't interrupt any of your spring break plans. All in all, it looks pretty good. It's just going to be warm. Uh, we could get temperatures near 80 next week. Uh, 72 degrees today by 4 o'clock, 69 by 6 o'clock, 63 by 8 o'clock. Uh, should be really nice for outdoor plans this evening, too. And then tomorrow, 67. Can't roll out a couple sprinkles, especially in the morning. And then some clearing skies during the afternoon. Then, we, of course, we spring forward. Everybody's looking uh, forward to that, right? Uh, 70 on Sunday, 72 Monday, uh, near 80 next week with just some slight chances of some showers there. Good travel weather. We're ready for spring break. Bring it on. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be uh, hitting the roads the next few days. Yeah. Nice with an hour less sleep. That too. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. <laughs> Good weekend for ladies high school basketball. Huh? And San Antonio Veterans Memorial girls basketball team. There's just something about these young ladies. They can win the close ball games. Another one point victory last night. And Fredericksburg will invade the dome today for the 3A state semis. The Lady Batman Billies coming up. Before we get to Larry, we've got some late breaking news for you. This is into the case at 12 newsroom from Paul Venema down at the courthouse. The jury has finished deliberating in the punishment phase of the trial of Rosinda Olalde. She will spend the next six years behind bars. She was convicted of intoxication, manslaughter and intoxication assault charges on Wednesday. Her lawyer had asked the jury for probation in the summer of 2018. Driving drunk, Olalde crashed broadside into a car, killing the driver and critically injuring four passengers. <laughs> Veterans Memorial head coach Christina Camacho with jokes after her Lady Patriots squeaked out another victory in big board sports. Veterans Memorial facing Mansfield Timberview in the Class 5A state semifinals at the Alamo Dome last night. After being tied 14-0 after one, Marley Rojas with the drive to the basket for the layup and it's 16-14 Patriots. How about a corner three now from Sahara Jones to make a 25-20 Veterans Memorial. And just before the end of the first half, half Vivian Castro delivers the corner three and at the half, Patriots are up 28-20. Now in the third quarter, the Patriots lead down to one until Rokas is able to find Reyna Williams for the layup and the lead is back up to three. Fourth quarter, Lady Pats down four when Sahara Jones cuts the Wolves lead down to two. They're trailing 44-42. The Patriots take the lead then when Reyna Williams gets the rebound and basket. Pats are up 45-44 and that is your final. The Patriots advance to the state title game against Frisco Liberty. Another close call for the Lady Pats. That was very stressful, it was very difficult, but we already know what to do as a team because we've been through in this position so many times. These girls, I'm just telling you, they're, I mean, they've been in the situation. And so, we, I mean, we just kept telling them too. We still had a lot of time and uh, thank God they, they did it. Uh, it was definitely really stressful. Uh, it was a close one there at the end, but luckily my team pulled through and we ended up winning. SA Veterans Memorial will play Frisco Liberty Saturday 3 p.m. for the Class 5A State Championship in Girls Basketball at the Alamo Dome. The defending Class 6A State Champion Judson Rockets will face Duncanville in the 6A semifinals tonight. One of six games at the Alamo Dome today. Judson beat Austin Westlake in the regional final Saturday 50 to 47. A tight win that can only help the Lady Rockets should they face another close contest. Senior Tiana Huggins has this message for the Rockets underclassmen. Um, just constantly reminding them to keep pushing through because games like that, they're really fast paced and they just have to remember that um, like the games are just going to be going so they can't like look back and say like they didn't give their all. So It's very exciting. Uh, not too many teams get to do this and we're, you know, we're grateful to have this chance again. So we're going to go for it a second time in a row. And in Class 3A, Fredericksburg will take on Argyle this afternoon in the state semifinals. The Batman Lady Billies beat Salado 53-40 in the regional finals to punch their ticket to the state final four. With only one senior on this team, the Batman Billies feel this is just the beginning for them. I would definitely think it's like our breakthrough and it's like, 
this is gonna show our time like this is just the beginning of like what we can accomplish like our motto this year is chasing great and like I think not only this year but for the years to come we're gonna continue to remember the feeling that we have here and push through and work hard to get that feeling for the years to come and for the teams upcoming. Argyle, um, a couple state rings. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have a really good standout player that's a commit, commit to SMU. Um, but I know that like if we play our game, we stand a chance and we can, you know, be a good competition for them. Argyle and the Batlin Lady Billies will play at 3 p.m. School was canceled in Fredericksburg today, so the students can all go to the game. There and we then go. Judson will face Duncanville tonight at 8.30, right? So you know all the kids in Fredericksburg. Thank you guys for advancing to state. Yeah, now just go to the game. Exactly. No hanging out somewhere. Go to the game and support <laughs> those Lady Batlin Billies. That's right. Good luck to them. That's yep. awesome. All right, Larry, thanks. We'll be right back. You got it. Stocks opening up low on Wall Street again today. Bond yields sinking to record lows. Here is a look at the stock market as we speak. Major U.S. indexes are down more than 2%. European markets and Asian indexes also low. You can see the Dow is down 408 points today. Gold prices did rise, but the price of oil fell 3.8% as investors doubted whether OPEC can agree with Russia on cutting production to keep up with falling demand. In Afghanistan today, officials say a gunman killed 32 people and wounded dozens at a ceremony held by prominent political leaders. The Islamic, group state, the Islamic state group claimed responsibility for the attack and has declared war on the country's minority Shiites. The Taliban says they were not involved in the attack. President Donald Trump has declared a major disaster in Tennessee. The president's declaration provides money that can be used for temporary housing, home repairs, and low-cost loans for uninsured property loss. Some money will go to state and local governments as well as nonprofits to fund emergency work in the area. The two tornadoes killed at least 24 people. And donations continue to pour in for those affected by the tornadoes in Tennessee, with Nashville being the center of the country music industry. Celebrities are pitching in to help. Kid Rock donated $50,000. Taylor Swift donated $1 million. The Red Cross has set up shelters for people who were left with no place to go after the storms. And the race for the White House is reshaping now that Senator Elizabeth Warren dropped out. She failed to place higher than third in any state contest. Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden are now fighting for her support. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. Senator Elizabeth Warren's endorsement is up for grabs. Well, let's take a deep breath and spend a little time on that. We don't have to decide that this minute. Already, her former Democratic rivals are courting her supporters. This was Senator Bernie tonight, Sanders in Phoenix last night. Tonight, we invite Senator Warren's supporters into our campaign. Vice President Biden tweeting, Senator Warren is the fiercest of fighters for middle class families. Her work in Washington, in Massachusetts, and on the campaign trail has made a real difference in people's lives. Biden is holding a fundraiser in Bethesda, Maryland today. Sanders will be in Michigan tonight. Both have spoken with Warren. However, Warren voicing disappointment in the turn this race has taken. Essentially, it's now a two-man race. I was told at the beginning of this whole undertaking that there are two lanes, a progressive lane that Bernie Sanders is the incumbent for and a moderate lane that Joe Biden is the incumbent for. And there's no room for anyone else in this. I thought that wasn't right, but evidently I was wrong. Warren now reflecting on all those pinky promises she made to little girls across the country. I'm running for president because that's what girls do. All those little girls who are gonna have to wait four more years, um, that's gonna be hard. Timing for any sort of Warren endorsement now is critical. Keep this date in mind, March 10th. That is the Michigan primary, 125 delegates at stake. It could be a big boost for either candidate. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And take a look at live cam, clear skies. Let's head over to Justin for the weather. Yeah, blue skies out there. It's gorgeous this afternoon and the aquifer is going up. Looks like the rain finally did help us a little bit. We're up three tenths of a foot to 672.6 in your pollen count. No big deal here. Mold is low, hackberry low, mulberry, oak and grass on the low category. So this is an improvement from yesterday. If you remember mold 
had jumped up because of the rainfall. Let's take a look at temperatures and we'll show you what's uh, going on. Actually, first we start with the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, this is a good one. We had a lot of pictures of the sunrise this morning and for good reason. Uh, the colors were fantastic. Holly sent this in from Poteet. Beautiful trees are starting to show here as we get into spring. We appreciate it, Holly. Thank you for the picture. Now here's a look at temperatures. 65 Boulevard, 66 right now in Bandera, 67 Tarpley, 68 in Hondo. Really, really comfortable. I think we'll gain a few more degrees here, getting to the 70s this afternoon. 72 for high, mostly sunny. A few more clouds tomorrow. There could be a sprinkle early. Nothing to worry about there. 67 degrees the high tomorrow, so a little cooler. But from there we go up. 70 on Sunday, mostly cloudy. And we could be looking at temperatures in the 80s next week. We'll talk more about that forecast here in just a couple minutes. David. Thank you, Justin. If you think lounging on the couch isn't bad for you, think again. Ooh, say it isn't so. A new study suggests that even an hour may make a difference. ABC's Inez de la Catera has more about how it can affect women's health. The idea of passing time by sitting on the couch watching television is pretty tempting. Yet for women 55 years of age and older, sitting on the couch might be more harmful than you think. Researchers found a strong link between sedentary behavior and weight gain, diabetes and heart disease. It turns out that each hour of sitting is linked to 6% higher fasting insulin and more than 7% increase in insulin resistance. These percentages increase for older Hispanic women. Experts say older groups need to stay active as much as possible to ward off these conditions. It can be as easy as taking a walk around the block or going for a quick jog. With this medical minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera, ABC News. The Food and Drug Administration will begin to crack down against fake CBD products. The FDA said it will continue to take appropriate action against unlawful CBD products that pose a risk to the harm of harm to the public. The FDA has approved only one CBD based prescription drug so far, which is used to treat epilepsy in children. The agency says they're concerned about other over the counter products that can cause potential liver damage. Still to come this half hour, the NBA season winded down, but one star finally gets to suit up. Larry Ramirez with that coming up in a few minutes in sport. And how Amazon's Alexa has new features that could help with your morning commute. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. On the far west side this afternoon, our Adam Kasky and Garrett Berger are shooting for a good cause. They're at the DPS Foundation's third annual charity, Clay Shoot. The proceeds go to the foundation, which helps DPS troopers and their families. Garrett's out there live. Garrett, how's the shoot going? Hey, it's going great so far. I haven't actually been able to shoot yet. We just got to our first station. Behind me, you can see all the shooters on here. We've got 138 shooters, plus Adam and I out here today. As you mentioned, this goes towards the DPS Foundation, which is similar to a 100 Club for the police department. They support uh, they support troopers and their families with scholarships, financial assistance, and emergencies, and helping with the uh, helping with troop the families of fallen troopers. You can see out here it's a good time, great weather for shooting, and these troopers say that the foundation helps them out. Sometimes, where uh, even during the holidays, uh, we have a um, uh, a person who's fallen in hard times, and just because they've maybe lost their home because of a fire or something like that, the foundation comes in and can offset some of those costs, helping families get into hotel rooms uh, during medical expenses, things of that nature. And so the foundation is great, and they can help us offset many of those costs. All right, so as you can see, a lot of great shooting out here. I just heard my name called. We're going to see how the family pump action works. Live on the far west side. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's see how it goes. There you go. You want to watch Adam, Adam shoot Adam? our first pull? What do you say? Do we have time? All right, go That's ahead. That's Adam, Adam right there. We're going to see how he shoots. <laughs> <laughs> got all day, Adam. Let's go. All right, here you go. Okay, load it up. Yep. Here we go. Oh, man. Here we go. I don't need to get it. All right. Fair, baby. Good oh, you got it. Right. That's hey. Adam. Yeah, Adam got one. Pretty job. Oh, there's Garrett. All right, All right, Garrett. Make us proud. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, go. Pull. All right. Nope. So, live on the far west side, Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> That's pretty good.
I don't, did Garrett get any? I can't no, get, that's see. why he looks so disappointed. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. You got, you, got a few okay, more, you got a few more shots. You're all right. What a gorgeous day to be out yeah. there helping out the DPS troopers, right? Well, well done to those guys. And uh, if only, uh, you know, we can be accurate like Adam, not only shooting, but in the weather, too. Ooh, that's a great job. Accurate on both fronts. Wow. wow. <laughs> nice. We like it. 67 degrees, the high temperature so far today. 47. The low this morning averages are 61 or 71 and 49. So another fairly average day. But look how hot it can be. 100. That was back in 1991. We don't want any of that. We don't have any hundreds in the forecast. Trust me. But a good seven-day forecast. It's coming up. In your consumer news, Amazon's Alexa trying to make your morning commute a little easier. Alexa will now provide severe weather and traffic alerts straight to your phone. Alexa is also upgrading its news and information features. Users can stay up to date on election coverage and watch NBA highlights on any Alexa device with a screen. And it seems like our grocery bills get more expensive by the day. And if you're looking for ways to save money, there are a few things you can do to save money. Buying items in bulk and not sticking to specific brands can cut the cost down by a lot. And another good one, don't shop while you're hungry and carry your list with you. You can go to ksat.com for more information on ways to save on your grocery bills. Two new movies open in, <clears throat> excuse me, two new movies. Two new movies open <laughs> and wide release this weekend, and one is set to grab the box office crown from The Invisible Man. CNN's David Daniel with this weekend's film forecast. This spell brings him back. Back like back to life? She wanted to meet you more than anything. Chris Pratt and Tom Holland lead the voice cast of Onward, the latest Pixar animated adventure, which should have more than enough magic to debut at number one. Variety predicts an opening weekend of 40 to 45 million dollars, while Deadline's forecast is for 50 million or more. I spent a lot of time hurting myself trying to hurt my father. I never picked up a basketball again. I need a new coach, Jack. You're the first person I thought of. The team any good? No. The Way Back looks to have a tougher time drawing audiences. The inspirational drama and its star, Ben Affleck, are earning good reviews, but box office watchers expect an opening weekend between six and ten million dollars. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I got all choked up on that grocery <laughs> list thing. Like all the check, checklists you got. Yeah, we go got to them. I, you know, you like, feeling better? Man, I you just okay? go down the aisles and start throwing stuff in the basket. I don't, you know. You still go to the grocery store when you're hungry, I'm guessing. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah, that one's a tough one. Bad yeah, news. it's dangerous. I'm guilty. Mm. So uh, I don't want to belabor the point. I, I feel like we've talked about it a lot, but one more reminder. What's that? Saturday uh -huh. night. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe we've talked about this too much. I don't know. Never. Uh, but daylight saving time happens. Uh, here we go. And uh, you can turn your clock ahead one hour. Saturday night, not tonight, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Obviously. That's one of those things you can never talk about enough because somebody yeah. will forget. Yeah, um, well, and you know, all the phones do it automatically yes, for you, but uh, there are a few clocks they we do? have to remember. Mm -hmm. They sure do, David. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. And uh, the sunrise. <laughs> the new sunrise will be at 7.51, new sunset 7.38. Let's go outside for you. We got blue skies right now, a few thin high clouds. Coming across the sky, 67, the current reading. Dew point is at 28. East northeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Winds will be right there in that range. I'd say 5 to 15, maybe gusting a little bit higher than that. Drawing in some fairly dry air here across South Texas. Uh, temperature 66, Comfort 63, Canyon Lake 66 in New Braunfels 67, Forestville 71 right now in Pleasanton. And quite a few 70s uh, down to the south. You got 60s north. This is great weather. Uh, and uh, we're going to see some more nice weather coming up tomorrow too. Dew points, as we mentioned, very low in the 20s, so that still puts us in that very dry category, if not desert air. Now, this won't last forever. Uh, we're going to start to see dew points increasing a little bit. In fact, as early as tomorrow, I think we'll start to see a, a gradual increase. So dew points by tomorrow afternoon in the 40s, and then watch the rise into the 60s by Monday. So that's when it starts to become a little bit muggy. Will that lead to a few showers? Possibly. There's not great chances there, but we will have a few uh, chances at uh, some rain early next week and even to the end of next week for spring break. Uh, again, on the low end, though. Uh, forecast side temperatures today, 72 for a high, 71 Gonzales, 69 Kerrville, 68 in Fredericksburg. Everybody's looking at mostly sunny skies uh, later today. Uh, there's like the visible satellite picture. We've got a couple of thin high clouds working across the sky, but not much. Uh, this sort of cloud cover, though, will be on the increase, I think, by tomorrow morning. There's enough moisture and a little 
impulse it's going to move in and that may create a sprinkle or two on your Saturday morning. But as we showed you, the dew points are so dry at the surface, probably wouldn't even reach the ground. So again, it's just not, not much to worry about here. Uh, as we look at the state of Texas and if you're doing some traveling, uh, tomorrow we get into the uh, 70s or this afternoon we'll be in the 70s and then tomorrow I mentioned that little impulse. There it is, just an added amount of cloud cover and maybe a couple sprinkles here and there. Uh, it'll start off pretty chilly in a lot of spots tomorrow, but warm up nicely. 60s and 70s, good for driving across the state of Texas, and that'll be the case Sunday, too, although we'll keep the clouds increasing here, and by next week we're talking mostly cloudy skies. 72 degrees today, and then falling off into the 60s tonight. Should be a very nice evening. And then tomorrow, 67, 70 on Sunday. 72 Monday, 78 Tuesday. You see the slight chances there right now. We're talking... 20, maybe 30 by Thursday, and the temperatures go all the way up to 80, so it's going to be fairly warm next week. And then Sunday's a good day, though, because we're all going to be tired. Oh, yeah. Yes, wow. right? Sunday's is... Yeah, okay. no, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll all be tired. Monday's going to be the tough one. It's always the Monday. For me, it's Sunday. I work Sunday. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's Sunday for you. <laughs> yeah. So Greg Popovich is back in the big boy chair. That's what Tim Duncan calls it. We'll have that for you coming up. <laughs> No, Pop's going to be back. I'll be happy to hand it right over to him. <laughs> At this point, yeah, Tim Duncan will hand head coaching duties back over to Pop on Spurs game day. Spurs small forward DeMar DeRozan leads the team in scoring this season at 22.2 points per game, and he's doing it with his mid-range jumper. Thanks to analytics, the NBA has undergone radical changes in the way the game is played. The mid-range jumper isn't used as much. Traditional centers are becoming obsolete. Small ball and three-pointers are all the rage. Drive, kick it off for three, it's just the way it is. But DeRozan hasn't changed his style. He's only attempted 33 pointers this season, which is an average of .5 threes per game. That's his game. He's, he's a power player. He's, he's not committed to, to, to shooting the three. Um, he actually shot it pretty well early on in the year for a stretch, um, but he's not committed to that. He's comfortable with playing that in that mid-range and attacking the basket. And, uh, yeah, he is our guy. We're going down the stretch. He's the guy we want to go to. Um, and uh, on top of uh, being a mid-range scorer like that, he's an excellent passer, and he's done a great job of uh, uh, breaking a defense down, getting it to the middle, and finding people when he has to. Uh, even with a lot of the guys starting to go underneath uh, under on him and trying to keep him in front, he's, he's still being effective. All right, let's put DeMar's three-point shooting into perspective here. The Rockets, James Harden leads the NBA with 738 three-point attempts. King's buddy Heald is next with 601. Damian Lillard is third. Devontae Graham fourth. And the Hawks, Trey Young is fifth with 533. So DeMar ranks 337 out of 513 players this season, which is 33 point attempts. So Harden has fired up 708 more three-pointers than DeMar. That's just crazy. Spurs will play at the Brooklyn Nets tonight at 6.30. LaMarcus Aldridge is out again with the right shoulder sprain. Marco Bellinelli will sit due to illness. And Jakob Pertl, of course, is out with a right MCL sprain. Shooting guard Steph Curry is back after missing the Warriors past 58 games while recovering from a broken left hand, just his fifth game this season. First quarter versus Toronto, Curry passes behind his back to Andrew Wiggins for a layup, a great pass by Curry with his left hand. As you look again, Curry with seven assists last night. Of course, he made three pointers, including this ridiculous one in the second quarter, beating the shot clock. Curry scored 23 points, 27 minutes, making three of his 12 three-point attempts. Warriors fall to the Raptors, though, 121 to 113. Even though DeMar DeRozan is not throwing up threes like James Harden, mm -hmm. his efficiency and his skill level is still there, and he's scoring yeah. over 20 points a yeah. game average. That's pretty good. And the thing is, when he threes. his last couple of years with Toronto, DeRozan shot over 100 three-pointers per season, so he can do it, but yeah. he's just not. A, he's, you know, mid-range jumper is definitely his strength. That game gets boring after a while. <laughs> it, it, out, does. Three. it does. It does. <laughs> now we know why Pop doesn't like it. Now we know who's not boring. That's right. We know these two are never boring. Well, thank you, David. 
Let's hope not. You're so sweet. But <laughs> you know what? I bet a lot of people are doing this right now, especially oh, yeah. kids in Count school, down. counting down because spring, spring break. break starts, yes, this afternoon. Yes. And now it's also Lent, of course, and a lot of people are going meatless. Yes, I didn't know what I was having today, but I'm so glad that Angie from Poke Planet is here. And what exactly Hi, is afternoon. Poke? Welcome. Poke <laughs> is sushi in a bowl, but today we're going to be talking about some meatless options that we have. And it's nice and fresh, and Colorful. we're going to show you how to make some. And there's also secret ingredients. Secret ingredients. To top off, that's very San Antonio, but you got to wait and watch the show to find out what that is. Yes, indeed. All right, we have got a couple of sweet little pups here. <laughs> they are looking for good homes. You are going to meet these two. That's a little puppy. <laughs> you got to do yes, the puppy voice. <laughs> exactly. You have to do the puppy voice. And speaking of dogs. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, whenever you're in trouble. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. Yes, get the little ones ready. Make sure they're watching this. We have a sneak peek of Paw Patrol Live. And I'm t I, I hate to warn you this, but you're going to have that song in your head <laughs> the rest of the day. But that's okay, right? It's all for the kids. <laughs> well, it is. Na you look so lovely in your dress. Oh, it is you. National Dress Day. <laughs> and we have got some models here with some beautiful, beautiful looks. And also, we're going to tell you about an event that's going to be coming up for charity with some mm -hmm. gorgeous dresses. Spring fashion, I'm so excited. Uh -huh. Plus, spring break. What are you doing for spring break? We want to know, so let us know. Tag us at SA Live. You know, and the nice thing when you hear about what somebody else is doing, maybe you can 